Well, I went to art school in 1960, and um, two years after art school finished, I went to training college to earn a living because I had to sort of support my four-year-old child. And I started to teach, and I taught for five, six years at secondary schools, and then two years at the School of Fine Arts here, Elam, we call it. And then after that, I ran a private class for adult women. And after we travelled um, overseas for a year, uh, when I came back, I tried to make it without having to teach very much. And I got the Francis Hodgkins Fellowship for a year in 1981 which is absolutely fantastic. So that meant I had a year in Dunedin. And when we came back to Auckland at the end of that year, uh, I decided I'd try and give it a go, just painting full time. And, you know, we had some pretty lean years, but I'm, you know, I'm nearly 65 and I'm managing. And I think, you know, at some point, um, I can't imagine going back to teach now, of course, but uh, working full-time in the studio, I've done that for years, and it's, it's what I do. Uh, what I call a hemisphere is the first shape I started to use after the square. And what I liked about it was this curve and the way it, the, the bottom plane related to the floor. So if you hang it on the wall, this always makes reference to the floor or the ground, and this curve soars up and takes up the rest of the space. And this space out here, where the, your normal rectangle would be, which has been cut away, allows for this lovely gentle curve. And that curve originally came from me looking at Romanesque architecture in France, where in the 10th and 11th centuries, before Gothic architecture, they built their churches and their chapels with a curved, arched roof. And they always put their art tucked into this curve at the end of the nave um, in this beautiful shape. And I just fell in love with the paintings that were there. And that gave me my curved shape. And then I could bring the movement of the paint from this straight edge over into the centre and back again. Sometimes I have movement on both sides, coming and going to the centre. And sometimes it comes across, which would be the right angle, and splashes in. And here you've got this pink crest of almost like a wave breaking into this deep blue here and then there's a little ridge of white paint along here a bit like a bar or a sand bar or a barrier or uh, an obstruction to allow the deep blue to have some space and to go back into sink back into space so this is very much in the front and that's very much a deep dark pool I thought I'd rather like to see what taking the curve from the hemisphere to the underside, what that would be like to paint on. And of course, if you do that, you get a circle. So somebody made me up a circle, and I didn't really like the shape. It was too, too harsh. In it. So the oval came as being a more gentle shape. And it meant that what was happening on the top part could be reflected in the bottom part. So I would have a continuous movement, probably easier to see in this painting, which is called Kofi, after the flower and the tree, in which there's a continuous movement of paint all around. Whereas in the hemisphere, the paint stops and starts and stops and starts 
it's repetitive and rhythmic and it has that inner rhythm in the work and here the re repetition and rhythm is more spiraling more all encircling in other words it's constantly in flux which i like very much the the explosion of color in say the works in the 70s the stained canvases in the 70s in which big areas that loosely relate to the sky and the sea and cloud and landforms and shadows and foliage and grass uh, because they're painted with a very free so-called spontaneous uh, technique in fact they're, they're highly structured um, I spend a great deal of time pushing the paint around until I decide that says it. And so you're left with a feeling of freedom and explosion of colour that relates to those experiences of absorbing and seeing landscape and skies and New Zealand sunsets and all the rest of it. But they, they go through a process of um, change in the studio where you have to transmute all of that experience into areas of colour on a canvas. And that transmutation, of course, is what we call painting.